the Great Deliverance Summit. Theme, Breaking Limitations. Some of you, the man of God can do meeting here. Deliverance service all day. Another evening service all day. And he's so tired, then he goes to his office. And then you want to see him. See, your wickedness has mercury. Because, listen, this man is somebody's husband. This man is somebody's father. He has been here, and you know he was here. You could tell the way he was sweating. Hello? And after that, you want special prayer. You say your case is special. Okay, sometimes because he's a good man, he will come and you pray. After that, after that prayer, you say, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, and go. That's all. Even thinking on getting something to refresh, even the sunny water is not an issue. And in case he says, you need to buy me some water. Ah, this man is charging prayers. This man is charging prayers. He's charging prayers. He's charging prayers. He's charging prayers. God was refreshed. That's the reason. One man in the Bible that, that was given a direct ticket to heaven by Apostle Paul was not an intercessor. I love intercessor. Sorry, was not in the worship. I love worship. He was a refresher. Go to the book of First Timothy. First Timothy. So, no, Second Timothy, sorry. Second Timothy 1.16. Second Timothy 1.16. Second Timothy 1.16. He said, the Lord give mercy unto the house of Onesiphorus, for he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain. That's the only thing that qualifies on a Sifra's house to have mercy. You understand by the meaning of mercy? Another version say, may the Lord give him mercy on the last day. The last day. Can I say this to all of you? Especially those of you who are old enough. You have children in school. You, have, you know, I believe majority of you like myself. Our children are not in school to help us. Can I hear an amen there? You have not taken your sons and daughters to school so that one day they will buy you a house. No, no, no. You are so blessed. You, you not do what some of our parents here did. That they are in your payroll. No. But the, no matter how rich you be, you cannot invest in the life of your child. That even on your birthday, and that time your daughter is a lawyer, your son is a lawyer, but because you are rich, like for example, you are the president, that even on your birthday, they will come and give you high five. You will question their head. Even if you don't want them to help you with anything, but at least they should refresh you for the work you have done over their lives. Yeah. Yeah. In church, there are people who complain when there is a special offering to bless the man of God. Just to refresh him. And let me tell you something. I don't know who came and introduced these envelopes. They are good. We love them. But they have become the hiding place of the gift, especially when it is for the man of God. You see, for building, because it will be announced, uh, Dr. Kehoro, 50,000, but this one nobody is announcing. So we'll find somebody who is wearing a suit that is expensive, kneeling down here with 150, say, I'm refreshed. That cannot even refresh a house girl. If you really want to treat your house girl, you cannot do that. But the enemy does not want you to do so. Now, God was refreshed. Apostle Paul was refreshed. Elijah was refreshed until he did not die. And they are mighty men of God. How much more? How much more? How much more? Look at this. Then we end this story here. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. One of the greatest tests that David laid down for his soldiers, 2 Samuel 23, was a test of refreshing. Was a test of refreshing. That is one of the greatest tests. The Bible says, David said, 2 Samuel 23, 14, and David was then, God of Philistine, and David, that's verse number uh, 15, and David longed Verse 15. And David long and said, Oh, that one will give me a drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. That was the only desire he had. He never said, 
Because, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand that refreshing the man of God does not mean he's a poor man looking for coins. It is a way of motivating the spirit to keep the spirit alive and fresh for some things. Every mouth, the Bible says, is a well. And a well can produce good water and bitter. Not the same time, but sometimes in the season. Refreshing suppresses the bitter words from coming out. And you leave the watch of blessing coming forth. So David is saying, oh, that one may give me water to drink and not from here, from afar. And the Bible says two guys went through the army, slashing them, killing them. Two, not ten. They brought water to David. He could not even drink. David could not believe that somebody can risk to go for water in a well that was protected by the enemies. But David had people who were ready to die for him. But they never want to see David thirsty. Never want to see David thirsty. Have you ever found sometimes they criticize even water that is served to the men of God? <laughs> yeah. See, I've discovered the other day when I was outside the country, most churches in the U.S. Because the biggest of Kenyan community in the U.S., when they are as big people, majority of them, before uh, September 11, because that's when the America became, you know, a bit, but majority of them came from well up family. And most of them, I was in a conference last month. Last month, we were in a conference, is it last month? In Dallas, and one of the guests, when he was preaching, the way I'm preaching, and then he said, can I, can I, can I use you, sir? Is, is it the way you can say, can I use you, sir? If I say that to this man, no matter who he is, as a guest, because I didn't say if I'm using him to slap him, just he will stand up and come. The man of God said, can I use you? The guy said, no. I'm telling you in the meeting, I was there, not in the movie. Can I use you, sir? He said, no. And then after saying that, I can sing kwakiti and I can cross migu. Yeah? You go to a Nigerian church in America, you will think you're in Nigeria. Yeah. Oh, God, you have come. That's where they pick you. They want you to sit in the back left. They receive you with flowers. They are in a foreign land, but the culture, they have moved to it. The same culture of dishonor that is here has moved there because it is the last country on earth. So which other country after America now? Which other? Is the last one. From there is heaven. So, so when you go there, they wonder, now because you have come here, what are you going to do? Because in Kenya, you pray for us to get visa. Now we have visa. Can I use you? No. Some of them are told, okay, you are going through this route. I don't know, route 75. Can you drop the servant of God? He say no. And they will not say no and say and give reason. No. No. Most of them are dying like rabbit. You know? And they wonder, what is their problem? This honor is damaging them. Damaging them. Because listen to me, according to what I know, you can't say that the way I was brought up. No. And you know what was the, actually I wish he knew. Because the man of God was demonstrating something there. Of the blessing. <laughs> of the blessing. Say no. He said no. Later we realized. He had actually suggested, because he was a leader in the church. That they should not have us go. Not because he knows us. But why should we bring people from Kenya in a village to preach for us here in the U.S.? If I show you the man who is talking. Okay. Look at this. Because listen to me. That is, that is one of the last demon you conquer to have breakthrough. <laughs> yes. There is one man of God in our town <laughs> who goes around. I don't know if it's every day, but he has done that three times to me with a photo in his jacket. He is, he's suffering, you can tell. Because the jacket is always, you know, dirty. And then he, the, in this photo, they took photo eating breakfast. Mkate, wameshika mkate ili buffet. Kwa nyumba. And you can tell that the house has forekat, you know. And it was his house. And the man they are eating, they are taking breakfast with, is Bishop Mark. Yes, those days. You can see how life was bad. And then they keep on saying, and then I realize why he's there. 
That was the end of the conversation. I knew. You, you need to take another one with me. And then I will be coming. I will not greet you. Because what has cemented you where you are is dishonor. How can, how can a man who slept in your house, you took breakfast with him, is up there. Why don't you lie down and say, sir, I will be washing your car. If God came because you are together, I will be washing your car for the rest of my life. According to him is that he comes around with big cars, he cannot greet him. Greet him as who? Greet him as who? Sir, we may be in the same book, but different pages. That man page is very far. But according to our culture, is that the best thing to do is to bring somebody down. Yeah. Bring somebody down. So if you grew up with a man of God here, the best thing you can do is to call him by the native name and if possible, give direction of his village. See your life, Madam Signpost. <laughs> why, why would you give direction of where somebody came from? The one that God has elevated. Why? Nothing can come from you to say, I refresh you. David said, the only thing I want, I don't want gold. I have enough gold. I just want if somebody can refresh me. And there were men who are ready to do so. I pray here, God is going to lift the refreshers. And one thing I know about refreshers, if you become a refresher, you, you divorce poverty for life. Yeah, poverty will never know your address. Because heaven will back you up, not for you, but for the sake of a man on this altar. As long as millions are landing to your hands, heaven knows somebody will be refreshed. May that be your story in Jesus' name. I say, may that be your story in Jesus' name. Look at this. Something else that you do, he said, when you receive them. Now, in the book of Luke chapter 10, he put something across. What is, the, what is, he didn't say about cold water here. He put something different, deeper than cold water. Luke chapter 10, verse number 8. Luke chapter 10, verse number 8. He said, and into whatever city ye enter, and they receive you, eat such things are set before you. Hmm? Those are the disciples. From verse 1, you realize the disciples are sending. He said, go eat. I don't know why Jesus Christ really connected eating with, uh, with his ministry. He said, eat. Now, these people, he's not sending them to go eating somewhere because Jesus Christ was able to perform a miracle of food. But ladies and gentlemen, he's telling them to eat and then perform a miracle. Yeah, go back there. Let's see. He said, and it's whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat such food and heal the sick. So, I'm wondering which scripture, which verse should come first according to you? Is it no healing first? Because how can you be eating and somebody is suffering? Jesus is saying, eat first. Uh, you know, I know most of you don't like this scripture. Like you see, ukirarua kwa Bible, itabaki kwa Bible utararua kwa yote. Now by the way, if this scripture, John 3.16, yenye ilikuokoa. Inasema, when you go to that place and they receive you, you eat first. Think about it. Eat first because there are some miracles that will not come out of a hungry man. He said, they want you to heal their father, yeah. Let the father stay there. You're actually, you are not the one who made him sick for the first place. So you don't owe the healing. But let him say, Oga, enjoy your meal. Eat. Are you okay? Yeah. Toothpick. Okay, now go. Heal them now. That means a miracle of a refreshed man goes faster than a struggling man. <laughs> one day, I went for I went, decided to go for prayers and brought up in full gospel. One of the things they really put in us that there is a specific place to pray. It took me actually some, I think it was a few years ago, to realize that I can pray from my station. So most of the time, we'll go somewhere. So there's this time we used to go to the bush. Some of you can remember here in this town. And you pray. When you arrive this way, because you know people have not been eating, and then the place is not, is not pleasant, because it's a bush, you sleep on the ground, you cover yourself with a funny blanket, they are kungunis. The prayers are so much humbling. You know, I don't know if you can get it. 
so humbling. You know, like, oh, Guadali, doka dige, doka dige, doka dige. The one who said, I will never leave you, neither forsake you. Don't leave me, oh God, don't leave me. And then one time I had, there was a presenter in Kericho. I went. This presenter was somebody's house. He decided to give it to God. So the room for bishops and apostles have six by six bed. The one that is raised here. You hold it, you jump to, to bed. And then there is a bathtub. And they would put hot water. Kuni wanaweka nani. And then there was a bonfire. Somewhere they would put fire and very nice sofa set. And then a good carpet there. I discovered my prayers change. Actually, I can tell you. My tongues all my life were. That is the time my tongues change. The tongues. Change when I was in a bed that is elevated. After taking shower in a bathtub. Yes, I tell you, prayer change. A lot of thanksgiving were in my heart. Thank you, Jesus. I see the future is bright. But in the other side, oh, Bwana Siria Chiria, na worship song ilikuwa kasheta nini, itakusema, kwa baba ni itakusema, ukireta nyoko nyoko, sheta nini, itakusema, sheta nini, itakusema, kwa baba ni. On the other side, you are Alpha and Omega, we worship you. Yes. We are so, you see, you are hungry. Alafu akukwa na stima. Munawasha kanyitera. God was very far from us. So Jesus said, when you arrive, I don't want funny, funny prayers. So eat fast. Yeah. Chop some meat. When you are okay now, now you can go and command a demon. To come out. Ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you the truth. When I, I'm telling you as a pastor with an experience. When you are preaching and you have come to the meeting with a good clean car, the suit that has just come from the dry cleaner, you are from the barber shop. And in your wallet, as you preach, there are about 20,000 here. You see another scripture. You, you, you yourself. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Even when you feel you want to go prophetic, you will feel somebody is here. God is about to bless you this year. But come from somewhere where you are delayed because your right shoe ilikuwa kwa fundi. Na fundi ya kachelewa, na trosa ilikuwa na punguzu wa west. Ni vile maisha imekumaliza. When you come, the only thing you can say, Nusema pandei, na hisi dhambi, na hisi dhambi, na hisi dhambi, na hisi dhambi. So, <laughs> yes, walijua for a straight healing without beating the bush with an authority. You need to eat first. That's why the first miracle after Jesus left that Peter and John performed was not at 12 noon, was at 3 after lunch. They had just eaten lunch. They are going to the temple. He said, look on us. You know, I, I, will, I will think Peter will say, look on Jesus. Lift up your eyes to the hill. Where your help come from? He said, look on us. Ragado zikete bagadash. You don't need silver and go right now. In the name of Jesus, rise up and go. That is a refreshed man. Man that is coming from a corner of honor. I tell you, corner of honor. A corner of honor. <laughs> you know, look at Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. <laughs> Galatians chapter 6. Let's, uh, let's read verse number 5 as we try to wind up now. He said, For every man shall do what? Now, According to Amos 3.3, 3, the Bible says, can two walk together unless they agree. In every church, including Mountain of Deliverance, when you are seated here and you are packed down, you are packed up there, even the overflow. According to heaven, you are two people. There is a, one man here, the one he called, and you, the one he's ministering to. So the Bible says, each man, you and him, shall carry their own burden. Shall carry what? Their own burden. Okay. 
So that means you have your burden. I have my burden. Verse number six shows us how this burden is separated. What is your own, what is mine? He said, let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all. Okay, so there is the student and there is what? The teacher. The work of the teacher is to make sure he's so sensitive to the spirit of God to bring the celebrity of the spirit to you. That's why even if a man has been given grace, like the man of God, the grace he has of deliverance, he does not do deliverance of one area. You'll hear this week is deliverance from the spirit of poverty. That is what the Holy Ghost wants to be given to the student of Mountain of Deliverance Academy. So this week, every poverty. The other one is from the curse of one, two, three things. Now that is what he wants. Now this work of the student, the Bible says, is to communicate to him that teacheth in all. I used to read it all things, not things. All good. Good what? Things. When was the last time you communicated good things to your teacher? You see, I will ask God when we get to heaven. Why didn't he allow the system of the schools outside there where we took our children this week to operate in this school? Because it would be so much fair. <laughs> Hello, sir. You are Elder who? Kamau. Because, you see, Elder Kamau with that book, just lift it up, the red one. We will just be closing the door and he's at the gate. And he will be reading the name of people. So he say, Alice... Sunday service, you are coming to church. You have not cleared your fees. Go back home, bring your parent. Uh, Peter, enter, enter. You have cleared your balance. Because he said, you are a student. I am the teacher. Because where we went to school to take our children, they take the child and they look at the fees. Before the child is taught, the teacher is paid. So he's saying, you are a student. I am your teacher. He said, my work is to teach. I am teaching. Am I teaching? Let's assume I'm your pastor now. Am I teaching you? Now he said, when I'm through teaching, communicate to me with good things. Not things from downtown China. Something you can pick from the upper side of China. Something I can show. He said, communicate it to me. Now if you don't communicate, the next verse is there. Verse number 7 says, what? What does he say? Verse number 7. He said, don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you... So if you plant me, I waste my sweat every day here teaching you. And then all you tell me is God bless you. <laughs> I was preaching in a church of black people. After you preach after the service, you know, their pastor, they come to the pastor and they go, ooh, ooh, you know, you know, they, oh man, God, that, that word was powerful. <laughs> so, <laughs> when I took the next session, I told them, don't just say, who, who, who. say, who, who, going to your wallet to refresh the one who has preached. <laughs> now, when you say, who, who, will I cook, who, who, to my children? Be reasonable. I have been teaching you. Communicate to the one that teaches. We do good things. Are you hearing me? You're like, oh, God. Oh, oh, oh. You know, <laughs> so now, okay, you are through saying that. And then after that, how will I fuel my car? He said, and if you don't do it, get to know this. God is not mocked. Whatever you plant, you shall reap. Now, what are you planting there when you don't communicate? You have caused a man to waste without a salary. So the next time you come to say you need special prayers, you did a delivery and a contract you are not paid. Let's check if you have been paying your spiritual teachers before we can call it a demonic attack. Some of you, you are just reaping what is wrong. And you see, the problem is that our own is smaller. You can communicate more, small. When you fail to communicate, heaven keep that silver files, files, files. And then God anoint Pharaoh. <laughs> you have to make sure that the end of the sweat there are a lot of biblical calculation mathematics we try to steal from God. Try to do something, like for example, when people are stealing tithe, they say, God will understand. Yes, he will understand. 
You'll understand. You see, when you steal the tithe, I discovered, you are empowering your devourer. Let me put it, you understand. Anytime you are supposed to bring tithe to church and you keep it, you have paid gym for your devourer. Yeah, so dev your devourer is just warming up. Your devourer was so slim. By after 10 years, your devourer is a bouncer. You know, he's a walking like this now. When you meet on the road, one kick, one kick, everything is down. You say they are demons, uh -uh, they are not demons. Is that our God cannot be mocked. Hello? I conclude this scripture. First Corinthians chapter 9. First Corinthians chapter 9. First Corinthians chapter 9. I tell you the truth. And I decree in Jesus' name, every one of you, <laughs> that the anointing that operates on this mountain has ever drank your water, may you be the first to receive the grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at it. For the interest of time, we read verse number 8. 1 Corinthians 9, verse number 8. Do I say these things as a man, or say not the law of the same also? What does he say? Verse number 9. <clears throat> For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of an ox that treaded out the corn, that God take care of the oxen. Move to the next verse. No, verse number 11 now. He said, if we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we reap or if we shall reap your kind of things? That's Apostle Paul now. The most spiritual apostle we know. You know, I love it in Kikui Bible. He says, netumutu gatete notu gati wakiro hori. Kayakiri udu munene atia. Toge gune kana ido siya nyusi ya kemwiri. Kulibasaika, kulibasaika there. Ati, ati kama kabisa. Tume wapatieni nyinyi chakula chakiroho. Kwa nini inakuwa ni jambo kubwa? Why are you making it a debate? Kwa nini yende kwa news? Kwa nini ingia kwa social media? Wakati wetu wakuvuna kutoka kwenyu. Vitu vya kiasili. Material things. Why is it a big deal? Actually, let me tell you, some people wana umagwa na material things they are man of God. Yenye hawa ku contribute. Hawa <laughs> contribute. Hawa ku, ato wa juu nitoka wapi? Like one time somebody called me and they just handed over a car key to me. I remember about 2016. And I came driving. So on Sunday, I have arrived with another car in the combo. And one of the leaders said, ask me, wa, 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 wa. Kai, nani alikupea hii? Nikamwambia siyo wewe. Unataka kujua nitoka wapi ya nini? Si wewe. Wewe ndo nikuwa supposed to repair because you are the one that I'm teaching. But another one who received my teachings once saw it good to get a car worth two million. It was not you. The thing you are supposed to ask is not who gave you. Is to go and pay somewhere where you fuel maybe for a year. To say I wanted to do it but somebody did it. I tell you the truth. No matter how we twist it, the scriptures will never be broken. I challenge you now because I believe in my heart that was my assignment in these two days. I challenge you because you are not a prostitute like Rahab. You are a child of God. You are saved. Do what she did. Add to your goodness and then see wonders greater than the one she did. Because every one of you under my voice, as you begin to meditate on refreshing the one who has been prophesying over your life, may you never dry. May you never die in the wilderness. Your kaka shall not be collected in the wilderness. May your children be refreshed. Some of them will go stay abroad in that country far from you. May God raise a refresher for them. May they never call you saying they are thirsty. May they never call you saying they are stranded. Let a stranger feed them. Let a stranger protect them. Let a stranger favor them. In the name of Jesus. Every one of you that is in defense of the grace. Every one of you that is committed in making sure that the grace of God is refreshed on weekly basis, on monthly basis, on yearly basis. May your roots never dry. May your leaves ever be green. In the name.
name of Jesus, I decree the word that will come from the mouth of the man of God that you have refreshed. Let it bless you double. Let it bring three times meaning over your life. In the name of Jesus, you came walking. That is the last and this is the last conference you will ever trek coming to the meeting. Whatever you are driving is not big enough. It is the last thing you will drive in the conference. In the next summit like this one, your story will be different. All of you that rejoice when the man of God is blessed, let those who rejoice over your blessings increase. All of you that clap your hands when your man of God is elevated, may God increase the corners of your friends and reduce the corners of your enemies. In the name of Jesus, I decree as the one by the grace of God was chosen today to speak over your life and God saw it well that I teach on honor. There is somebody here under my voice that you need to be refreshed. You refresh the servant of God some years back and Satan came to cut the supply so that you don't continue to supply and to refresh. I command the reconnection of that pipe. I command the reconnection of your finances. I command the reconnection of your finances. Go back to your millions. Go back to your billions. Go back to your dollars. Go back to your pounds. Go back. And as you go back, may you never forget your assignment. May you never forget your assignment. As Apostle Paul say, pray. And say, may the Lord have mercy on the house of Onesiphorus. I pray for mercy on the house of every refresher. For he often refreshed me. He said, even in Rome, he looked for me to refresh me. Every house of a refresher, I pray as Apostle Paul, receive mercy. Receive mercy. Receive mercy. Receive mercy. Receive mercy. In the name of Jesus. As you receive the next guest that will be speaking in this meeting. I decree in the name of Jesus. You will receive them with this understanding. And because of that understanding, I decree you will have a testimony to share after this week. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. To the sons and the daughters of Oracle. I decree in the name of Jesus. As the Oracle goes up, may you never remain on the floor. You who is not a criticizer of his grace. You who is not fighting this grace. You who celebrate when he's blessed. You who celebrate his testimonies. I vow in the name of the God that called me. The God of Israel. Floor is not your portion. Dust is not your portion. Ground is not your portion. Poverty is not your portion. Breaking is not your portion. Borrowing is not your portion. Rise up to the higher level. In the name of Jesus, so shall it be. Your business is international. Everything about your life is international. Locality, mentality is destroyed over your life. Now and forever. In Jesus' glorious name. And everybody shout amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. Let's Come on, let's celebrate the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen and amen and amen. And you, and you, and you shall never lack a refresher. Anytime you are thirsty of something, may you harvest from the way you have refreshed the servant of God. May it work also in your life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for watching. We hope you've been blessed. To get a copy of this whole sermon or any other on DVD, SMS or call, 0710 448570 For prayers call 0719 727272 or 0722 656906 To partner with the Oracle Television Network SMS or call 0700 626 Zero three two six.